Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to get started with Celestial Navigation. Uh, hopefully you've seen the previous video that gave a little introduction, but for those of you who are wanting to dive right in, uh, today is going to be the day and we're going to go right at it. So I decided to pick the least appropriate airplane I could possibly imagine for this purpose because we're never going to leave the ground today. For this video we're just going to concentrate on how to do the measurements, how to do the plotting, and how to calculate your rough position. Then we'll get nice and complicated and get ourselves something that can actually fly. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first things first, uh, we want to make sure we have ourselves a copy of CellNav for MSFS. Uh, what this is, is this is a handy dandy little uh, plugin. It's written in Python. I, I play with the source code. It was kind of like they did a really nice job on this. So make sure you download that and extract it. Uh, once you do that, then it's just a matter of finding where you saved it to and activating it. In my case, I just dropped that in its own little folder here. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for that when you do extract this, extract everything. Otherwise, you're going to go insane trying to figure out why something doesn't work right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. You have this one called MSFS CellNav uh, 2.22. I'm sure there's a new version by the time I get it. You're going to get this terrifying little window here, which is going to make you immediately think like, oh my God, what have I done? And you're going to get this glorious little thing here. This is the actual uh, device for taking it. This would be our sextant if you prefer. And to be honest, it's the best sextant I've ever had. I've never had one that's this easy to use. You usually have to actually sit there and deal with the motion of the ocean and the plane in order to get a reliable number. But this is all we're going to need for this part. We're not going to do anything crazy yet. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at a little nav map. I've already got that sucker opened up in the background. We're going to need it. Uh, this is our current position right here. You can see we're parked here. Obviously, we're cheating, but for today's purposes, I want to show you how that cheating will allow us to show you how accurate or, if you prefer, inaccurate celestial navigation can actually be. Uh, the other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to get ourselves a copy of the nautical almanac for the particular year. Now, the nautical almanac is uh, very, very simple to use. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to crack this supper open and you're going to find yourself, remember in the previous video we showed you where you can get this, today's date. So we're going to pop, 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 I believe today's date, last I checked, is the 1st of May. So if I scroll all the way down here, we're just going to find ourselves some handy dandy May. That's uh, September. There's May 1st. Bing, 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 bing. Uh, so we need May 1st. Pop, 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 pop. And we have the 1st right here. So what does this tell us? Uh, this tells us everything we need to know. It tells us that if you were looking at the sun, which is our targeted body for today, we're going to keep it simple. We know that at this particular time during the day, notice this is GMT or UTC, we know the sun is in this position. Uh, what do these two numbers mean? Uh, basically, you've got the first one, which is going to tell us its angle, and the other one is going to be its declination, which is, you know, basically it's a relative position. So now keep in mind that we need both of these numbers in order to be able to reliably calculate what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all my pre-calculation, do my measurement, and then and see just how close we get. So let's begin. So right now, I'm looking at the clock right now. It is a 929. So um, we don't want that information just yet. I'm gonna go back to flight sim real quick. We're gonna go ahead and fast forward a teeny tiny bit. We're gonna get closer to, oh, I'm glad I checked that. <laughs> we're gonna go fast forward time a little bit and we're gonna take a shot exactly at 12 o'clock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fast forward to 1150, which is 150 UTC. That's 1350 UTC. So I'm gonna go down here and find 13. And uh, we know exactly at the hour, by the way, if you're not on the hour we have to actually calculate things differently notice by the way at 12 o'clock the sun is literally straight up that's that's desirable that's what we want but we notice at 13 that we're dealing with this one and since it's 1350 that means our calculation is going to be taken at 1400 which is a two o'clock utc so we know the sun is going to be 30 43.5 it's kind of a deck of 11 here so let's go ahead and dial that information right away so we're going to go ahead and dial in this first so we're going to say that was uh, 30 degrees 43.5 so we come here 43.5 declination very very critical here and we're going to remember this is for two o'clock because our shot is at two o'clock utc is going to be at 11 so 11 zero zero you want to make sure you catch the north or the south in this case uh, these are all going to be north see the little n here it kind of gives you a clue if this is in the south that also means that you're on the other side of the year or the, the other, you know, depending on the situation. So we're looking at, uh, let's see here, 14 was going to be 1511, 1511, 1511, and it is in the north at this time. Let's confirm that one more time. 3043.5, 3043.5, and we have 15 north, 11. 15 north, 11 north. Excellent. So this is going to be instrument reading. Uh, what we need to do here is I always use bubble horizon. I always set this to the center of the body that we're looking at. We don't know this number yet. We have to calculate this. The next number I like to put in is going to be my index error. My index error comes right out of here. If it's positive, it's positive. So this says it's two minutes positive. So I'm going to come in here and do two. Uh, this would be height of the eye. This is an important calculation for us. I'm actually going to pop over the flight sim here. I'm taking a look at my instrumentation, and I don't have instrumentation, which tells me my altitude. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> so unfortunately, that particular value is not at our disposal. Uh, lucky for me, though, is I can come into a little nav map. I can cheat a little bit here. Uh, taking a look here, wind direction, don't care about that. Uh, visibility indicated uh, vertical feet per minute. Altitude, I am 169 feet. So we can come in here and do 169. I leave all these blanks. I'll feel free to play with these. Uh, this is a little advanced, and it will not affect this enough to actually matter. The last thing we need now is we need to take a reading. If you saw my video from before, remember we're comparing where we think it's going to be, which we're going to calculate now, against where it actually is, and that gives us our actual results. So we're going to pop over to the flight simulator, and we're going to go ahead and create an assumed position. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here, I'm going to go ahead and use your points, add user point here. Now you cannot work this accurately in this software. The closest we can get is to the minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this zero, and I'm actually going to zero out all the seconds here. So our assumed position position is going to be 3241. Again, this would be a dead reckoned position. This is not something we'd be able to just pop in here and steal in the real world. But again, for purposes of demonstration, this works great. 3241 is our expected. So we're going to go pop back over here real quick. Our expected is uh, we're easting, uh, no westing. No, there's no way we're 3241. That's way too high. We're 1646 west. Whew, confused myself. And my latitude here, which is going to be like a ladder, is 3241. 3241 in the northern, I believe, yes. 3241, 3241, 1646, 1646. So this is my assumed position. This is the position of the sun. We're now going to go ahead and measure where the sun is and compare that to where we expect it. This is the reduction step. In the real world, the reduction step, if you have a big scary chart, you can actually calculate it. We're not going to deal with that today. We're just giving you a basic version of this so that you have the ability to literally fly with it. So we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and create this as my AP, and this is at 1400. Um, we probably should also put the date, 5-1-2022 here. So that way we know. I'm going to press OK. So this is my assumed position. Notice it's a little inaccurate to where we are because, like, like I was saying earlier, we only get down to minutes. We don't get seconds. So this is as accurate as we can possibly get an assumed position if we're doing celestial navigation. Obviously, we're right here, but that's what makes this so much fun to calculate. Now we get the fun part. We get to do the calculation. We actually get to do the reading. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It's my favorite part. Not really. In the real world, it's such a pain in the butt to take these readings. Trust me, it's uh, almost not impossible, but it's pretty darn close to irritating at the very least. So we're going to take a look at the time. It is 11.54 a.m. Remember, we have to take the site at 2 o'clock in the R1400 UTC. Also remember that it's a two minute reading. So we're actually gonna start the reading at 59 and then we're going to end the reading at 01. It takes two minutes, it actually averages it out for you. That's a good thing for us because it simplifies the things. Next problem we have is um, no clock. <laughs> so even if I click this sucker on real fast and I go pop up things, we have very, very little accuracy as far as you know local clock or something like that goes. Like I said, I picked the least appropriate aircraft we could possibly pick for this just for the purposes of having a little bit too much fun with this. Now what I'm hoping here is that our little handy GTN 750 here will have a working clock on it so that we can go ahead and cheat. Because like I said, you need to know the time to the second. Every 10 seconds you're off, you are like a mile and a half off. So you want to be very careful here with this. All right, so we have our system status. Uh, the system status looks pretty good there. Uh, we can hit set up here, com nav. We got some options. Uh, this is not going to help us out too, too much. Obviously, if you hit license, we're not going to get too much in that one. Channel spacing, options. That doesn't do us any very much good. Status, like I said, usually there's going to be a clock in here somewhere give me just a moment there we go now we got something a little bit better so we have a Cessna 170 I had to switch out because I could not find the one that I wanted but like I said it is so stupidly critical that we have an accurate time because if we don't know the time we're going to have no ability to take a reliable reading so now we've done all of our math all of our calculations are correct everything's ready to rock so what we're going to do now is we're going to wait for this clock to finish going around you can see I've got myself a good solid uh, 20 35 seconds in the moment this hand smacks into this one right here we're going to begin taking our shot remember we're using the sun here we've calculated the sun we've got the correct time of day we've got the correct date we've got the correct piece we've done our pre-calculations we've got our assumed position everything is ready to go before we finally hit this critical moment which is when we're actually going to be measuring it and then calculating to see just how close we really are like i say this is uh this is the scary part and one of the fun things is they did a nice job with this too and you'll hear exactly what i mean in a second once i click the button <laughs> I just know how everybody likes to sit here and watch uh, two minutes go by. Ka-ching!
Kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, this is the uh, fun part of uh, doing any sort of work with celestial navigation. It tends to be tremendously time-consuming. Uh, one of the things I think you'll find a little interesting is as we get a little closer to the end of this sucker, what's going to happen is the program is going to suddenly freeze. And yes, I know I could have edited this out, but unfortunately my pause button got broken because, uh, you know, you can see Python has uh, seized up my computer pretty well there. But don't worry, it's working. I promise you it's working. It's, as they say, doing the math. <laughs> I'll watch it finish three seconds early. Ah! And now we've got ourselves a value. 6822. Sweet! So now we're going to come over here. We're going to type in what we got. 6822. Calculate. So here we go. We have an observed altitude of uh, 6896, uh, 19.6, which is our observed altitude. This is what we got. And this is after doing the math here. Our computed altitude was supposed to be 6823.6, which means we have a four nautical mile difference between where we think we're supposed to be and where we actually are. Now, here's the best part. See, this, this is azimuth. This tells us what the expected position of that sun is. We can now plot this. 219. 219. Remember the number 219. 219. So we'll take our assumed position. I'll go ahead and control click. And we'll go ahead 219 for four nautical miles. So let's go say yeah, 219. 219. Remember, this isn't true. 219. And we need four nautical miles. 219. 219, I think I need to uh, change my view here because it's just a little bit too tight for me. Grab this one. 219, 219, and 219. For what do we say about four nautical miles? And stop. So this position right here is our actual position based on what we have. So I'm going to come in here. Um, we can call this one calculated position. Oh, it's okay. I'm not going to always go back and change it. So here's where we assume we are. Here's where we actually saw the sun, and the, you can see the difference here is about four nautical miles. Now, what makes this even more amusing is the fact that I'm sitting right here on the runway itself. So if I actually do a calculation like this, you can see that, um, yeah, I'm about four nautical miles off, but I'm also not where I said that I was. So you can see that even though we did every single piece of math perfect, we calculated everything, we did everything exactly as we did. I may just sit through two minutes of clicking noises. Sorry about that. You can always skip. That's like I said, it's a clicking ASMR. So um, you can see here that we have got a position which is actually over here. So now if we were flying, which we'll do in the next video, we'd actually have to keep a running total and basically calculate as we go so that we'd be able to quickly and accurately kind of bang on all the different pieces. So hopefully this shows you that it's not nearly as scary as people think it is. Like I said, we did a very straightforward shot today. We just did a single star. In this case, we'd use the sun. Uh, we also did it while we weren't moving. We also didn't do any modifications to what time of day it was. Remember, the sun moves 15 degrees an hour, which means if we're two minutes into the hour, that sun has moved 60 divided by 15. Is that many degrees? And we said two minutes. So it's, yeah about two degrees, which is actually a pretty substantial amount of movement of that. So not two degrees, a half degree, sorry. It will have moved a half a degree by the time we actually watched it. So that gives you an idea of how tight you have to be with both your timing, as well as your measurement, as well as your calculations. But hopefully you found this interesting. Like I said, next time we'll do this in the air and we'll use the same kind of shot so you can see that the process is exactly the same. Other than that, enjoy.